But anyway, back to SmackDown. What do you think about young Blair Davenport? I think she reminds me a lot of Jamie Hayter. That's a good thing, actually, because Jamie Hayter is really good. I think she's all right. Well, she, you know, I thought that was the the character that Lisa Welchel played on that girls boarding school show that was borderline pornography for 1978 or whatever. The girls in a boarding school all by themselves. You know, the, the strict rules they have at girls boarding schools, lights out at nine, candles out at 11. That show was something. And then Blair Davenport... <laughs> wrestled Naomi and we were back to glow. Really, Naomi was glowing. I like, and then we, I like Naomi. She makes you just want to get up and move. Just get up and, and, and jump makes, around. And she glows. Makes me want to get up and change the fucking channel. And I don't even have to. I've got the remote. She's built like Mrs. Met. Like no one, I've seen no Who, one else. What? Really, Mrs. Met, the female mascot wife of Mr. Met, the original baseball mascot. Wait a minute. Now, hold on. Let's back up a second. So there was a baseball mascot called Mr. Met. There is currently. Still. There is currently. Have they been divorced or is he still married to Mrs. Met? No, all of a sudden, like a decade ago, it went from Mr. Met. See, Mr. Met was there like in the early days. He had a giant paper mache head. Like in the early days of Shea Stadium. Uh -huh. And then when the Mets started winning, suddenly Mr. Met kind of disappeared. And then throughout the 70s, when things got bad, Mr. Met kind of wasn't around. And when the Mets took over in the 80s, there was no Mr. Met. But when they fell on hard times and they were desperate to get kids back to the stadium, Mr. Met reappeared in the early 90s and he never left. And at some point, they introduced a wife, a woman, giant baseball head mascot who would so run around with Mr. Met. And she just had a dynamite body. I mean, that was the thing. It was like, it would throw you off. You're like, Man, look at that body, and but there's a and giant look at fucking that giant baseball head. mache head. Yeah, what yeah, does she look like? Yeah. But so the the Mr. Met was to draw the kids, and Mrs. Met was to draw the horny fucking fathers. I don't know if that was the intention. I think they just needed someone uh, who was willing to wear this giant fucking head on a hot day and run around a baseball field. With large upper frontal protuberances. Well, I'm not on, gonna, the, on the female. I'll uh, just say uh, she she had she. Every Met fan had to notice it. Were they bigger than baseballs? Of course, yes. Well, were they bigger than softballs? Have you played softball? Yeah, I'm aware of what a softball looks I'm, like. I'm not going to judge uh, the body parts. Were they on... were they bigger than cantaloupes? What is wrong with you? I'm just asking. For who? For to what? determine what she would look like with a giant round paper mache baseball head, well, I'm trying to determine nope. if she was balanced with. I don't. I don't believe it's currently paper mache. The original head was paper mache. They uh, hopefully better put a catcher's mask in there so somebody doesn't come up and punch Mister Met in the fucking face. The Cincinnati Reds kind of stole the Mister Met look. They just added a mustache to it, but that's kind of bootleg. But there are other. Obviously, the Philly Fanatic, the San Diego Chicken. There are other you mascots. You should have had... But Mr. Met is the first. He's the original. He's the greatest. Oh, good Lord. You should have had the Mets call down here one of our local television personalities, famous man in the Louisville area from the 60s and 70s, could have come up and helped you. His name was Milton Metz. Milton Metz. And he had a baseball or a baseball-shaped head and glasses. You want to know how bad things got for the Mets right before they sold the team at the end of the 70s? Mr. Met wasn't around. They introduced a new mascot, Metal the Mule. And it was a fucking mule. They named Metal that would just graze around in the outfield. What the f <laughs> In New York, I, where, where we're known for a little Wait a mules. minute. Who is, this is a professional baseball team making these yeah. decisions. What do mules have to do with anything in New York? And why? what did he have to do? Did he bang his head? The Metal Mule, did he bob his head up and down to Ozzy Osbourne? Well, Metal the Mule was only there for a very short period of time, but it was a questionable decision. Metal you mean to tell me that but that actually got out in front of the people before somebody with oh, some yeah. semblance of sanity meddled with Metal? I think Metal was there for at least a season, maybe longer. <sighs> well, let's get back to SmackDown. Why? It's so much more fun to talk about baseball mascots, even though you know nothing about them. It's more fun. Well, I know, but we got to get to the werewolf, you know, and because we're still in glow. Because after the Davenport and Naomi match, then in the back, 
we saw Bianca and Jade and Naomi, and they immediately started squealing at each other and hugging each other. And then they did a bunch of scripted shit that I and they and in the process of this, you see Chelsea and Piper sitting in the back out in front of Nick Aldis's office with Aldis on the door, and Bianca and Jade and Naomi say out loud that Nick Aldis is not there. And then they fucking freak out, Chelsea and Piper, and rush into Aldis's office. And then Bianca, Jade, and Naomi keep squealing at each other until Naomi sees Blair and Jade and Bianca walk off and Blair doesn't want any trouble. She tells Naomi that maybe the best person won and she offers her left hand to shake it. And they shake left hands. I and then I get is is the is this a new uh, Blair Davenport is from across the pond. Is this a new thing they're doing over there, shaking with the left hand? I have not uh, seen people do that. I would not accept that. That's disrespectful. I think. Oh okay. well, then Chelsea and Piper came back out of Aldous's office, and you'll never guess he wasn't even there. And then they walked off, and then while Naomi is standing there contemplating the situation, Blair came back from behind her and just leveled her and walked away from her. And again, besides for an L.A. night interview and a goddamn tag team match with the underneath folks, we have it's been all women all the time on this program. 